Good morning and welcome to the Congregational Church of Bound Brook. My name is Reverend Andrew Smith and I'm so happy that you could join us this morning. The title of my message this morning is The Hammer and the Sword. I want to read for you a poem that I think is just so beautiful. And it was written by Morgan Harper Nichols and it says, when your worries are louder than howling winds and your strength is growing, but growing thin and things are breaking more than they bend. That is when you've reached the end, the perfect place to start again. I'm speaking this morning to people who are starting over. Maybe you've gone through a particular wilderness experience in your life. Maybe you've made a commitment even in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic to just get your life in order. Well, if you are at any place where you are starting again, this message is for you. And let me say this. It is a good thing to start over, but if you don't have a proper strategy, if you don't have a proper mindset and a proper strategy in terms of approaching this restart, chances are you will find yourself back in a place of personal spiritual bondage. I want to use for this sermon the example of the people of Israel found in the Old Testament. A people who had their struggles with God, even though God had called them for a good purpose, they weren't perfect. They struggled with it. And even though they knew God and had seen God's work in their lives, they rebelled against God. And because of that, they found themselves many times in their history in bondage to other nations. And in the midst of this bondage, in the midst of this time of retribution, they came back to their senses and asked God to help them, to give them an opportunity to start over. And it is in this place, my friend, that I think we can find great principles from their experience that we can apply to ours. Starting over is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. But it is only a good thing if you accomplish the purposes that God has for you in the restart. If you don't, you could find yourself going in another circle. A circle that will take you back again to a place of bondage. God willing, as we examine this today, we will find God's word to be a help and a guide for us. Let's pray. Father, in these few moments, I ask you to speak to us. Heavenly Father, we need you. So many of the people under the sound of my voice are going through different life experiences and some may feel a bit overwhelmed. And Lord, I pray right now today you will give us guidance. Show us from your word that starting over involves a strategy. And Lord, even as we put in place this strategy, Lord God, insulate us, protect us by your grace and give us a future. Thank you, dear God, for your word. It is true. Guide us into all truth now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Picture this. The Israelites have been in exile for 70 years in Babylon. They finally, after 70 years of crying out to God, they receive permission to go back home, to return to their land and to their cities, which had all been abandoned and destroyed. The people are ready to rebuild the nation. The people are ready to start over again. But as expected, there is opposition. Let me say this, my friend. Whenever you make a decision to start over, you're going to find opposition. Sometimes that opposition comes from outside, from other people, from other circumstances. And sometimes that opposition comes from inside of you inside of you, that place where you've become so accustomed to the bondage of the normal that starting over looks like a huge mountain that you cannot climb. 
Oh, my friend, whenever God is at work, the devil is there to bring opposition, to bring us to a place where we are not active, to bring us to a place where we do not accomplish God's will for us in the midst of a restart. For the Israelites going back into the land of Israel, they were finding opposition from a neighboring nation, from Samaria, from King Sanballat. And because of that, the people had to think. The people had to strategize. Let me say this, my friend. Whenever there is need for a restart, there has to be thoughtful consideration and strategizing. You ever notice that at the beginning of a new year, people make New Year's resolutions, and they make those resolutions genuinely desiring to change their lives. But generally speaking, many people find themselves falling down on these resolutions, not because they weren't sincere, but because deep in their hearts they did not make a proper plan and strategy as to how to keep that commitment going. And so they fall down. Maybe God is saying to you today, as he's saying to me, it is time for you to sit down and analyze and develop a strategy by my wisdom so that you will be able to start over and to be successful. You can bet in your life there will be opposition and there's nothing wrong with opposition. That is how we develop character. That is how we become mature. But if you don't have a strategy, you will fail. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, verses 1 to 21, we have an outline of the Israelites' experience as they go back into the land and as they seek to rebuild city walls and to rebuild cities. I think we can learn from them the right mindset and the right stance to have when you're starting over again. First of all, the right mindset. If you look at Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6, I think it gives an indication of the first aspect of a right mindset. It says in verse 6, So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Part of the right mindset when you're starting over again is you have to be ready to put the work in. Many of us, we want to see things change in our lives. We want things to be different, but we want things to be different without any effort on our part. We want God just to snap his fingers and for us to go from a place of bad habits to good habits. We want him to snap his fingers and to see us go from a place of financial reversal to a place of financial prosperity. We want him to snap his fingers and for everything and every relationship to fall into place. Oh, my friend. If you are going to be successful in a restart, evaluate your heart and mind. Evaluate your perspective. Evaluate your motive. And ask the serious question, am I ready to put the work in that is necessary? The people of Israel, yes, they had been in bondage, but they knew if we go home, we have to secure our cities and we have to have the mindset to accomplish these things. And oh, my friend, because of that mindset, they were well on their way to securing their future again. You have to be ready to put the work in. You have to be ready to sometimes stay up late at night. Sometimes you have to be ready to spend way beyond the regular days of work. You have to go to whatever place is necessary to find the resources so that you will be successful. But it begins in your mind. They were ready to put the work in. But not only that, if you look at verse 14 and the A part, it says, as they were speaking there, it says, Do not be afraid of them, the opposition. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. If you're going to have the right mindset, oh my friend, you cannot be afraid of opposition. 
You cannot be afraid of opposition. It is so important, and we've been repeating this subject of, of, being, fear, of being fearful and, and how fear will affect you in your life if you don't have the right and proper perspective. When you are fearful, you cannot have faith. And when you don't have faith, you don't have the most essential resource you need. The resource that connects you to God and to, re to the resources that God will give you. And so the people were told, don't be afraid of the opposition. Remember the Lord. Remember who he is. He is great. He is awesome. There is nothing he cannot do. And with him in your life, there is nothing you cannot accomplish. Yes, the mountain may look high at the restart. But if you trust and believe, and if in your heart you are not afraid, you are well on your way to success. They were ready to put the work in. They were not afraid. But in the B part of verse 40, we find another aspect to that right mindset. They were committed to each other. The Bible says in 14b, fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. The people were encouraged to think about the life that they had, to think about the people whom they, who they were responsible for, to think about the things and individuals that they should care about. Right now in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, we are encouraged to cover our mouths. Why? Because we want to protect the people around us that we interact with. Life is not just about me. It is about the people around me in my sphere of influence. And it was no different for the, people, for the people here. They were told to fight for their brothers, fight for their sons and their daughters and their wives and their homes. When you are restarting, my friend, part of your proper mindset is to be committed to the people around you. To see your restart as an opportunity to bless them, not just yourself. As we know as Christians, we are not just called to our own happiness and joy. We are called to care for those, to love our neighbor as ourself. And it is so significant that at the outset, for the Israelites, they were told to watch out for each other. That's part of a proper mindset. They were ready to put the work in. They were not afraid, and they were committed to each other. Let me ask you, my friend, do you have a proper mindset as you restart? Right now, are you thinking exclusively about yourself? Are you allowing the fears of the restart to overwhelm you? Oh, my friend, learn from the Israelites. Because as they developed the right mindset, they were well on their way to the success that God had for them. Yes, part of a good strategy is a right mindset. But another part, and I think this is so significant for what it is that we need as we restart. We have to also have a right posture or a right stance. And for them, it was very simple. The right stance is to watch and to pray. To watch and to pray. Now we've heard this term in the scriptures repeated over and over again. Watch and pray. In fact, Jesus Christ himself said that to his disciples on the night before his crucifixion in the Garden of Gethsemane. Watch and pray. Because even though he was about to make all things new, he knew it had to come through a disciplined approach and with a total dependence on the Father. Watch and pray. In verse 9 of Nehemiah chapter 4, he says there, And we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against their enemies day and night. 
It is both a demonstration of faith, dependence on God, but also a demonstration that faith without works is dead. Let me say this, my friend. You can pray to God day and night, asking him to bless you, asking him to change your circumstances. Sometimes, my friend, in order to see God work in our lives, we have to be ready. We have to be on guard to do what is necessary to prove our faith in God. So it's not just praying, it is watching and praying. It is having preparation, not just of spirit, but of mind and heart and hands to do the will of God. That, my friend, is part of having a right stance. In verse 17, it says there, And the leaders stood behind the house of Judah, who were building on the wall. Those who carried burns were loaded in such a way that each labored at the work with one hand and held a weapon with the other hand. The hammer and the sword. And I think it is these two factors, these two combining factors that show us exactly the right kind of posture when you're starting over. Yes, we have to have a hammer, a strategy, a disciplined approach to how we want our lives to be so that the restart will be right. But not just that, we have to have the sword. The sword for protection from the wiles of the devil, from the opposition that will come. Yes, as we build, we guard so that we see God working and doing his mighty acts as we put into practice this idea of a right stance, the hammer and the sword. Half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and the coats of mail, and the other hand was committed to working and building the wall. A right mindset and a right stance results, results in success. Oh, my friend, maybe at this moment, God is saying to you and to me, what is your mindset? What is your posture? What is your stance? Are you depending on yourself? Are you going based on your experiences in the past? Or are you allowing God to guide you in terms of your mindset and your stance? I can guarantee this. If we follow God's guidance, we will never fail. If we don't do it his way, if we do it our way, chances are we will. I don't know about you, but at this moment in time, God is calling on his army. God is calling on his people to be ready. To have the hammer and the sword ready and to have the mindset to accompany it. One that is ready for work. One that is unafraid. One that is committed to one another. God willing, as we put these things into practice, we will see God rebuild our lives, rebuild the people around us, and rebuild our nation. Because that is God's intent, to change circumstances for the good. That's his desire. The hammer and the sword is part of the Christian reality every day. And I pray each and every one of you as Christians would encourage yourself every single morning to take upon yourself the hammer and the sword in accomplishing the will of God in your life and in your family and in this world. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. Your word is true. And Lord, we love you. And we want to be in a place where we see your mighty acts demonstrated in and through us. For every Christian listening to me, Lord God, give them the right strategy. Help them to have the right stance. Help them to have the right mindset. And I pray when all is said and done, give each and every one success. Lord, we are facing difficult times, but you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us. You will always be with us. Father in heaven, we want to lift up to you in a special way our world that is right now dealing with, struggling with the issue of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
We ask you for strength. We ask you for wisdom. We ask you for patience. We ask you for all the grace that is needed, not just to make it through, but to thrive through this. Lord God, we pray for every medical practitioner, every ancillary worker, every essential worker that is out there every day, putting their lives on the line in order to provide the resources that we need to be comfortable. God, bless them, be with them, sustain them. And if they're feeling overwhelmed right now, Father, please, Lord, encourage their spirits. I pray for CCBB, I pray for every church that we will be lights in a world that truly needs some light right now. We love you, we honor you, we praise you. We thank you for all that you're going to do in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen.